the infrastructure of our country. Well, I'm all for that, but I think it has to be at the expense of something, and it had better be at the expense of tanks and aircraft and aircraft carriers. <clears throat> so we have lots to do, and we have a lot of global hot flashpoints in the world, and we have a lot of them right here in our own country. But it's because of people like you all who say, I'm not going to sit back and let the bureaucrats in Washington and so Trump says he's flushing, what is it, draining the swamp of the old, the old bureaucrats. Well, he'll bring in a swamp of some new ones too that we all, as good citizens, have to be very vigilant and go after them and not let them get away with any of this mess. So with that, I want to thank you all and keep the faith, whatever it may be. <laughs> thank you. Was good. Yeah. A while ago, uh, it was the word got out that law enforcement was using social media to see who was at the campsite. And when the word got out, thousands of people from all over the country uh, said that they were there to just overwhelm them with too many meetings to serve. <laughs> yeah. military equipment to local law enforcement? Yes, it's a good question and it's something that we should be going to our city council every single meeting that they have to find out even if they know whether or not their local sheriff has received this what they call 1033 equipment which is military excess equipment like uh, armored personnel carriers like these uh, sound machines that you've seen in the photographs at uh, Standing Rock, sound machines that uh, can give out such a beam of sound that it, it can burst your ears, it can actually injure uh, internal organs. There's such a vibration that goes out. Uh, the assault equipment that you see that is being used in by so many of the uh, law enforcement groups. Uh, so we do need to watch very carefully. Many times the sheriff will receive this stuff and not even tell the city council they have it until somebody sees some of this big equipment rolling down the streets of their little town. And I mean, little towns get this stuff. Little towns that can barely afford to buy regular patrol cars all of a sudden are getting these very, very big, expensive assault uh, vehicles. So it's always worth uh, going to the city council, seeing what they know and keeping track uh, of the sheriff and the, the police force itself. The next thing that will be coming will be drones. They, they, they already know how to put weapons onto drones. Uh, and they, they aren't the big predators and reapers, the big military drones, but they're smaller, smaller drones that still can hold lethal equipment that can be used over your cities. Thank you. Actually, more of a comment than a question, if you don't mind. Um, I mean, we, we appreciate that you can go to all these wonderful places, not wonderful places, but uh, <laughs> a, as a representative for us, and many of us want to go to these places, and not, not all of us can, and we can't go to all the places we want to go. But I just want to uh, make sure people uh, understand we can do the actions right here, too. Yeah. There's 17 banks. Some of us sat in at TD Bank uh, headquarters right here in New Jersey. And those 17 banks are funding the pipelines in North Dakota. So, you know, you can go to your own bank, if it's Chase or Bank of America or TD or you know, Wells Fargo. 
what, Wells Fargo. You know, they're all funding these projects. Uh, not to mention, you know, the ones funding military disaster all over the world. So don't forget, we can do it right here, and, um, and we, we can try to go as many other places as we can, too. Um, not everybody has the freedom to do that, or the money to do it, too. That gets to be a factor. Um, but let's see what we can right here, too. Yeah, yeah remember, and, and Carol is exactly right. I mean, there, all of the, the travel I do is, uh, uh, on one level of it, trying to be kind of an ambassador for goodwill from representing you all. But the work that we do right here in our own communities is the cr critical part of it. And the work we do, plus how we we get it out so other people can see what we're doing, so that they can they can learn from from what we have done in our own communities and give them ideas of things they can they can use in their their communities also. But what we do locally is so critically, critically important. And how we train and, and work with our uh, our youth. I mean, we look around here. How many? How many are under the age of 40 in our audience? Yeah. Well, we've got we've got at least 10. <laughs> so working with with organizations that have a youth component to it. Uh, to make sure that whatever it, they are working with, whether it's the environment, whether it's uh, incarceration, whether it's in, you know whatever issue it is, to uh, work with them so that they will work with us on the other issues of, of peace, of, of things like that. So uh, our, our own ability within our own communities to get people really, really uh, moving um, to to save our communities is a, a critical part of what we need to do. Thank you, Carol. Good. I just want to ask Carol one more thing you can do. Boycotts, no-go gas, because they're one of the primary backers of the Dallas pipeline. Don, don't say with me one or two more questions, yeah. and then the silent auction winners will be okay. right Okay, thank Terry has a question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for all your insights and bringing this information to us. Um, Carol did point out a really important thing that um, the Nor Norwegian bank did pull out. And so it does have huge impact, huge effect. Um, I wanted to comment briefly on Chelsea Manning um, because they also have put out an appeal for people to write cards. And I've been trying to do that once a week. And I think it's an easy thing to do that I think is powerful because she needs all the support she can get right now and all the love. But um, the other thing about this traveling to other places, a lot of people do go on elder hostel trips. Well, there's no reason why there can't be more elder hostel to peace zones, where we want peace. So that might be a model we could build on, because people do travel. Um, and uh, I think you're an inspiration for the fact that you could get out and see these places because uh, I know I would love to go to Leavenworth or to Standing Rock, and here I'm on kind of either side of the country, but we have to make an attempt to try that. So thank you so much. Well, yeah, thank you. And for great organizations that can help uh, get you places. Uh, the organizations can help get you there, but your own community can help fund it. I mean, the, the majority of people that go on these things don't fund them all themselves. They have to have some help. And generous people in the community, once they know you really want to go to Standing Rock, or you do want to go to Palestine, or you do want to do whatever it is, people will help you do that. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And things like the interfaith peace builders that take very, very good trips to Israel and, and the West Bank are, are important organizations that you can work with. Code Pink Women for Peace, Veterans for Peace, all of these groups are now starting to have 